Good morning guys, welcome back to Lake Branch Farms. I hope everyone's having an absolutely fabulous Sunday morning. It is another hot and humid day here in Central North Carolina. And to give you a little bit of context, we are in grow zone A slash B. We are right on the North Carolina, South Carolina line. And our hot, humid weather usually extends all the way into the end of September. So we got a pretty long growing season around here. So in today's video, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be transplanting some more yellow squash in the field. Um, I think that's our fourth planting of yellow squash and we may get some more patty pan in I'm not sure yet I got to look at my tray and see what I've got but I'm giving you guys a kind of a tour of the garden and what we've got going on right now and what we've got coming up to go into the garden we are also going to talk about some cool season crops that we plan to plant or start seed for in the month of July some of it we've already got up and going but we've got a whole lot more that we got to get started this month. We're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about our overwinter onions, our short day onions, what we're going to start here in the next week or so to get ready to transplant into the fall. All right, so to kick things off, we're going to walk around the garden over here beside the barn um, where we're going to put all of the tunnels. And you remember I told you I wasn't going to put a lot of energy into getting that area of it planted because I got another tunnel in the barn that we're going to construct here hopefully here in the next two or three weeks but let's start over here in this one i transplanted more caiman greenhouse tomatoes in here and you can see we lost a few but that's okay i got some more in the tray over here that i saved that we're going to transplant into here and we've got to get these guys trellis here before too much longer now caiman is in the indeterminate it's going to climb and it's going to keep going just like these cherries do and we're going to have to trellis these guys and give them something to go on but that row of tomatoes and we're going to put another one on the other side I don't know if it's going to be Cayman. I got some determinants over here that uh, we can use in here also, but we've got to get our tomatoes. We've got to get our greenhouses and our high tunnels um, planted with determinant tomatoes or tomatoes in general to move into fall. Now, right now is the time that you want to have tomatoes ready to go in your tunnels for fall. And, you know, you're going to run into a time to where the, the daylight is going to dwindle down and everything's just going to slow down and stop growing. And you want to have your plants ready to produce fruit or have fruit hanging off of it when that happens. That way you just harvest. You don't have to worry about growing, you just harvest. So I'm gonna go ahead and be up front. This tunnel here is a complete disaster. It did not turn out any way, shape or form like I pictured, but I'm not talking about the structure in general. I'm just talking about everything I planted in it. Now, I did plant cucumbers, corintos, and I planted sun gold cherry tomatoes on both sides. Now, they grew like they were supposed to. I harvested them like they're supposed to. I just didn't take care of them like I should have. And I started trellising, had good intentions. The trellising method that I planned to use was not adequate enough, and I've got to rethink that whole thing before I get ready to put something else in the ground. But I'm gonna let these sun gold run their course, and you can see, I mean, they're putting off gangbusters, dude. They are putting off huge i'm getting a gallon maybe two a day off of these two bushes or these two rows and i'm just gonna let them run their course i'm gonna let them go ahead and phase herself out and when they show signs of slowing down i'll get rid of them because i got a whole nother plant of sun goals and i've got a plant of secura red cherry tomatoes that i want to put in here for fall that's the plan so far to have two rows of determinants on the outside two rows of cherries and then one row of determinants in the middle and this house will be done once the tomatoes are done, then I can put lettuce in here in the late fall, early winter and close this thing up and just harvest off of it all winter. All right, this little area beside that tunnel, we had these, um, I think these were Celebrity Plus tomatoes. They've done played out. We done harvested everything off of those. Um, I'm just waiting to get them out. A whole bunch of weeds and this lettuce here, I do not know that it is gonna make it. I think that the mulch is getting so hot that it's burning the bottoms of the leaves. So it's kind of making it a little bit undesirable i mean you can harvest it but you have to pick through it to get the good leaves out and it's just not cost effective in my book um i've, I've since started a whole lot more lettuce and i've got them in trays so i need at least this row to get the other tunnel put up but i'm going to wait and take this one out too and then that way i can put a four foot space between the next tunnel so once all this is gone all this is gone i'm gonna start cleaning this up here pretty soon but when all that it's gone that's when we're gonna start putting the tunnel in all right guys, so this, these are the two rows of cucumbers that we planted in the last video. Those are the bait alpha cucumbers. Um, they put on new growth, they're green. Um, they look good and we did lose a few on that end. 
But guys, we've been pushing 100 degrees around here for like two weeks, and we did get a little bit of rain here the past couple days, and has helped out tremendously. But still, I mean, it's hot. It's way hot, and we're in mid July, so I mean, it's going to only get just a little bit hotter, but it's going to get way more humid around here anyway. Um, I did pull two rows of those Supremos out, like you seen last. Planted these are red night bell peppers. Filled these two rows up with peppers. I got two more trays of peppers that I'm going to put in the, these two rows when I pull them, maybe today, I'm not sure. And then what we got left is the Excelsior Pickling Cucumber. And they've been doing pretty good. We've been harvesting a lot of cucumbers here lately. Um, but I am going to get some more pickling cucumbers ready for the fall or for the field garden down the hill or either to the front of the high tunnel. I'll show you that here in a minute. So that kind of brings you up to speed of what we got going on up here. And a lot of these crops will terminate themselves when it frosts. That's just something we do every year. We pack everything full of tomatoes and peppers and we just harvest off of them, you know, until the weather takes them out. And, you know, that's usually our first frost in here is late October, early November. Sometimes it's even late November. So, I mean, we got a pretty good while to go yet. So this field here has been completely cleaned out, dissed in. And I went around yesterday and I play, sprayed um, for weeds all the way around the garden and going to terminate that. I'm going to do a little bit more permanent um, border for this garden because I always had this issue to where the weeds want to creep out of this out in here and it's just hard to maintain. But I may get some lumber or something other to make a little bit more permanent border, something like that. I don't know yet. It's just a pain. It always is every year. And... This is a more of a sandy, sandy loom, clay type soil, and I've been mixing organic matter in this thing for three years now, and it's finally, it's looking a whole lot better than it was, and you can see the difference in this soil and that soil. I didn't utilize this as much this year, other than carrots and beets, and it grows a great carrot and it grows a great beet, so um, we're gonna mix more organic matter into this, dist all this in, form new beds, and we're gonna go into fall and winter with a whole new, uh, crop a whole new setup um basically we're going to start new in this plot in the going into fall so next year we won't have to do anything but pull fall crops out put warm season crops in so i'm gonna take you over here and show you what we got started so far in trays and i'm waiting on a lot of trays to come come in um greenhouse megastore was running a sale on prop Techs and i bought i think it was 20 of the 242 cell trays i like the uh, prop tech trays are real rigid i mean it'll last you a lifetime and i've got a lot of the the regular trays like this here i've got a lot of these too but these prop techs i mean you're going to buy them once you're going to buy them once and that's it and i like the 162s and i like the 242s you know for regular crops but i also like the 338s for things like onions and you know uh kohlrabi i use them for kohlrabi but we got a lot of collars we got a lot of collars started. We got some Brussels sprouts. I think these are Brussels sprouts. I got some uh, Swiss chard, some dead on cabbage, which is like 115, 110, 115 day cabbage. And then we got some more, our second plant of cantaloupes. Uh, I think that's cabbage too. Um, tomatoes, I think these are, uh, what is it? Red snapper and red deuce, yeah. Yellow squash, straight neck squash peppers um cherry tomatoes these are ruby crush and mountain magic and these are leftover tomatoes from what i planted to put in the rest of these tunnels i got some sun golds secura these are caimans and those are red deuce and this is lettuce i just started that lettuce here Let's see if i can see the tag 7-eleven and you can see it's already germinated that silent over the lettuce man it don't play um i can make it germinate at 85 degrees no problem all right, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna show you guys how I store my seeds. Um, don't laugh, because it works. Let me walk down, I'm going swimming. Anyway, um, I got an old refrigerator here in the barn and the whole top side of it is full of seeds. And like I said, don't laugh. But this is where I store my seed. And this is the shipment I got in not long ago. Gotta have popsicle, but got to have popsicle. But I got this seed order in the other day and i'm gonna show you what this is so i got it from hoss um short day onions i've got the 10 15 y texas super sweet onion got a quarter pound uh parade bunch of onions 25,000 seeds that won't last long and red creole onions a quarter pound those are the short day bulbin varieties that we're going to plant this year 
now I've planted candy in the past. I've planted uh, madeleine in the past. And candy did great. Candy, did, I got some one pound onions out of that batch. But um, the way we plant our onions is we overwinter them. So we plant them late, late September, you know, early fall, late summer. And what we do is um, overwinter them, which means we grow them all winter long. And around here, surprisingly, onions do grow throughout the winter. They'll hit a, a spot when you get really cold weather that they'll just sit there and kind of look like they're gonna die. But immediately, as soon as it starts to warm back up, they'll jump on with new green growth. And I mean, it's just amazing to watch because it can be 30 degrees outside and onions are just as green as they can be. So here on our farm, we sell a lot of onions. Last year, our onions did not do as well as they should have, which I blame myself for that because I didn't put them on the fertilizer schedule that I usually do. This year is gonna be a little bit different. I have already picked out one plot that's gonna be nothing but onions. And I'm thinking that we're probably gonna wind up with upwards of five to 10,000 onions in that plot. And that's why I bought as much seed as I do. Obviously, you do not want to transplant that many onions at one time. You don't want to have to do that. So what I normally do is take a 338 cell tray. Can I show you one of these? Like the name says, there's 338 cells in that tray. And what we do is we sprinkle several seeds in each cell, say four or five seeds. And it's nothing, you know, there's no science to it or anything. It's just sprinkling it in by feel or by sight. That's a 338. So if you put five seeds in that tray, I mean, basically in each cell, if you use five seeds in each cell, then that's five times 338. And we plant singular onions. We don't plant them in a bunch. We plant one onion per six inches. One every six inches is what we plant. Normally we do four inches apart, or excuse me, six inches apart, four rows wide. So anywhere from eight to a thousand onions per row. And you can see where one plot, one of our 50 by 50 plots has anywhere from eight to 10 rows in it. And there's a thousand seed or a thousand plants per row. So you can do the math real quick. One plot could house up to 10,000 onions easy. And that's what we're shooting for, for to maximize garden space and to maximize yield in a certain area. All right, guys, we're down here in the lower garden. <clears throat> this is where we plant, you know, crops like patty pans, yellow squash, zucchini. And we plant on weed mat just because the weed pressure is so heavy in these pots. And you can see I've got these things planted on like a 20-inch spacing. That's yellow crook neck. What we're planting today is going to be yellow straight neck. And I want to say it is grand prize. If not, it's gold prize. I'm not sure. I plant both, but I'm not sure what I got out here to plant today. Yellow straight neck squash, yellow straight neck squash. Yeah, this is gold price. So <clears throat> I've got some grand prize up there to start it in trays that we'll transplant into some of that patty pan over yonder that's done got weed bound. But um, yeah, you can see it's pretty green. You can see I got them on automatic irrigation. These are uh, XL wobblers and they will do roughly, I want to say a gallon a minute, a gallon and a half a minute per nozzle at 50 psi which i'm not running it that high i'm only running it at 25 so we're roughly getting right at a gallon a minute out of each one of them and those two nozzles there are on seven seven foot risers and they will cover this whole entire plot 30 feet wide 50 feet long they cover it and then some come out to the rows they do an excellent job um, i'm glad i switched over to those and i've got them on an automatic timer and i'll show you that here in just a minute but I've got it set up on four zones, and I only use two zones, right? Well, I'm actually using three, counting the okra. I didn't show you guys the okra. I'll show you that in a minute. But <clears throat> what we do is set this thing up. I irrigate twice a day here. It's every 12 hours. Normally, I will irrigate um, 11 o'clock in the morning for these pots, and then it'll irrigate again at 11 o'clock at night and kind of let that water get and you know set in. And it stays pretty warm. I got it turned off now because it was going to kick on while I was out here working, but... Yeah, it's a rain point, four zone, irrigation timer. And see if I turn it on, it tells you what time it is, but it's set off to go at 11.30, so zone two, this zone over here behind me. And what I'm gonna do is leave that on, and I'm gonna turn the water on, and at 11.30, this zone you see right here, it's got zucchini in it, it will kick on. And we'll probably still be working down there, so you'll get to see it. But 
um yeah i was gonna show you guys okra field i forgot all about it but basically come down here and picked okra this morning so this is what our okra looks like this is jambalaya and we've been picking on it for well we started on a schedule this week pick it every other day and it grows really really quick really really quick and i've been fertilizing it with triple 20 and um, it stays green it stays really really deep green so i'm pretty pleased with it so far they're putting on two three pods at a time and you can see the electric fence all the way around it because the deer will they will murder it if you don't have electric fence around it but if you look here all these pots have been cleaned up redist they're ready for winter crops there'll be a plot here and there'll be a plot here there'll be probably close to six to eight beds in that one six to eight beds in that one so on and so forth and then you can see down there that is an onion plot there's gonna be four rows 100 foot long and then on the back side there's gonna be six rows 100 foot long and that's probably gonna be nothing but onions and garlic this year all right guys nothing new here you see me do this a thousand times <clears throat> basically we're just gonna make a divot and with these we're gonna put half of the big screw so that would be three quarters of a tablespoon and the same thing and it helps if your soil is a little moist and like i said these have been on automatic drip and uh it makes it a whole lot easier until you hit a rock we got a lot of rocks down here but uh hopefully we won't hit none but you can see you want to make a divot you're basically going to push that plug in there and we're going to kind of pack around it and the soil that we use to pot these with is pretty good stuff so it, it will have less transplant shock this way <clears throat> and once we get done with both of these rows here we're going to turn this irrigation on anyway i don't know if i'm gonna get around to pulling any of them i may wait till this evening when it cools off some and come down here and start on that but i'm definitely going to get these two rows done here it's almost noon so it, it's going to be pushing 90 to 100 degrees on this mat here for too much longer and uh, i still got to get down here and spray this uh spray this other squash you got a lot of see a lot of squash squash bug eggs on these plants you gonna see some damage over here anyway but like i said it's that time of year to where we should be seeing these things <clears throat> but i got some spinosad which is an organic pesticide i'm gonna spray on these i don't like to use anything but this time of year you almost have to just to keep everything at bay and uh you know we just we have to do what we have to do to keep crops going so and that's one thing we have to do during this time of season and y'all may wonder why i'm using this knee mat to scoop down this row and i'm going to tell you this black mat is hot you can feel the heat generating off of this thing and it is very uncomfortable but i only got two in that one See which one looks better but yeah it uh makes things a little bit more bearable this way All right, guys so that's where we're gonna call a wrap for this one but don't miss the next video because we will be starting our overwinter onions the onions that we will plant this fall and transplant into the garden and we will take care of them guys all winter long up until next spring where we should have some one pound onions to take to market but as always guys we appreciate you guys stopping by we thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one